Today we're going to talk about microdiscectomy plus minus uh, instrumental diffusion. Uh, the indication usually for this procedure is lumbar disc prolapse, uh, which is causing uh, pressure either on the coda equina or on one of the nerve roots going down to the lower extremities causing the leg pain or what is known as sciatica. So the goal of this operation is to, uh, by minimally invasive way, remove that fragment uh, of the cartilage or disc which is compressing the nerve root or the coda equina. Microdiscectomy is a procedure done by a minimally invasive technique. Uh, incision is about two to three centimeters. Uh, some surgeons use uh, optical loops and some surgeons use endoscopy or microscopy to have a magnification enough to finalize this operation with this uh, small incision. Uh, I personally use uh, my own eyes, uh, but some surgeons would prefer to use endoscopy. Uh, I mean, all of these uh, methods are really the same. Uh, the main gold standard is still microdiscectomy, and the idea is that we really need to reach to that particular level, uh, get through the ligamentum flavum, which is a ligament connecting the two vertebrae together, uh, we may enlarge the space slightly by taking a piece of bone from the lamina or from the facet joint uh, on the side just to get uh, reasonable access to that disc fragment lying within the spinal canal and remove it. Microdiscectomy again is a straightforward procedure. It takes 45 minutes to do. The complication rate are very low, 1-2%, to 2 mainly uh, dural tear, infection, hemorrhage, nerve root irritation. But most of this complication is usually recoverable and I don't think the patient should worry and not to consider the surgery because of that low risk of complication. Now, there's another risk here which is the uh, risk of recurrence uh, in the lumbar disc prolapse which is about 10% and uh, usually in, uh, this can happen within the next three to six months after the first surgery. And for that particular reason, fusion of the uh, lumbar spine with uh, instrumentation give an advantage of reducing that recurrence rate to virtually zero. But again, do we have to really uh, do uh, instrumented fusion on everybody for just that simple risk? I don't think this is justified. And uh, for that respect, I would personally uh, uh, consider instrumented fusion in certain cases uh, mainly when the patient has significant lower back pain in addition to his leg pain or if we are doing a revision case where the uh, disc already reoccurred uh, after previous surgery or in cases of spondylolysis if there was any particular instability already uh, in the spine uh, mainly due to degeneration or due to uh, anatomical factors.